Hello and welcome to my guide to Garrisons, the new feature in the Warlords of Draenor expansion. So this guide is really going to cover everything with Garrisons and it is going to be aimed at all players. However, if you already know plenty about the Garrison buildings and all that, then you can just use the menu on this video to skip ahead to the section where I will give specific build advice to um, suit your playstyle. So whether that's PvE, PvP, gold making, and really anything, I will have a recommendation there. However, the rest of the guide will be based on explaining all the buildings, um, how you level up, and in general, just all of that stuff. The menu in this guide is annotated, so if you have annotations enabled, then you will be able to jump around the guide to all the various bits. Okay, time for the first part of this guide. Just a quick introduction and overview of the feature. So the garrison itself is basically your own personal fortress, and it's going to have a number of slots for various buildings, each of which will have a rather unique effect. The garrison starts off at level 1 and can be upgraded to level 3, with each level giving you access to additional building slots and more. The buildings themselves also start at level 1 and can be upgraded to level 3, with each upgrade giving you access to new content and perks. There are three different kinds of building sizes and garrison plots, small, medium, and large. A building can only go in its matching plot size. Small buildings are generally profession related. Medium and large buildings though, have got more wide reaching gameplay effects and will be very important in tailoring your garrison build. Your building choice will likely depend on what you want to do, so I will cover that at the end of this guide. At level one, the garrison will have one small and one large plot. At level 2, it will have two small, one medium, and one large. And then finally, at level 3, you will get two large, two medium, and three small. I will cover every building specifically later on in this video. So in addition to these garrison buildings, you also have the follower system. As you quest through Draenor, you will get various followers. Some of these are quest rewards, and some of them are hidden out in the world. I will do a guide on how to find the specific hidden ones, though, um, at a later date because there's quite a lot of research that goes into that. Anyway, these followers can be sent off on missions. This is done but via the garrison table thingy in your town hall. These missions involve your follower heading off for a period of time and coming back with either a reward for completing the mission or nothing for failing it. Your chance of success depends on the requirements of the mission, level of your followers, and then more importantly, the traits of your followers. At level 100, followers will get more powerful by increasing their item level rather than leveling up. This is done via using these special gear upgrade items, which only can be used on followers, and you get those from some missions, from the salvage yard building, or from the bunker slash war mill. Upgrading your followers will unlock harder missions that can reward dungeon or even raid quality gear. This stuff will become quite clear once you see it though. While you will get lots of followers by just leveling up regularly and doing quests, there are a whole bunch of them scattered throughout the world. I'm currently working on a guide which contains every single follower in Warlords of Draenor, so far anyway, and that should be up tomorrow. So be sure to either subscribe or just remember to check back then. Now, buildings are constructed with a unique resource called Garrison Resources. These are gained via missions, questing, collecting treasures in the world, killing rare mobs, and then also a Garrison Cache, which will constantly refill at a slow rate outside of your Garrison. The Cache is located next to your Town Hall. Also, while you're leveling up, you will want to pay attention for the various treasures and rare mobs that are present on Draenor. I've covered this stuff in full in my Warlords of Draenor leveling guide. Essentially, the treasures and rare mobs all drop garrison resources. Now, you can spend them in a certain XP potion that's inside your garrison, or you can just use those garrison resources to build up all your buildings really quickly. You can really do whatever you want there, and just check out that guide. It will have come out the same day as this one. Now, I know this is really brief, but that's basically all the information you will need to know for this guide. You will learn quite a lot as you level up in Draenor anyway, so I'm not particularly concerned about that. Now that the basics have been covered, let's talk about leveling up your garrison in the second part of this guide. So, the garrison is unlocked right after Tanan, and the initial quests will provide you with a barracks. By the time you finish Frostfire Ridge slash Shadowmoon Valley, you'll be able to upgrade your garrison to level 2. When you reach level 2, you will then learn plans for every single level 1 building, bar the salvage yard and a few of these little bonus buildings which I'll cover later. Now this does open up quite a lot of freedom. Personally, I recommend just keeping the barracks in the large slot, putting a lumber mill in the medium slot that the, um, that the level 2 garrison unlocks, and then matching up whatever crafting professions you have with the small slot. Though I will cover the buildings next, so don't worry about this too much. 
Next, you should just keep on working up to level 100. Now, as you level up, you will get these items called books via a few different quests. Now, these books are used to purchase blueprints for the buildings, and there are two kinds of books. Outpost Binding Assembly Notes and Comprehensive Outpost Construction Guides. Now, in case you're not aware, in each Warlords of Draenor zone, you'll get a choice between two buildings at your main sort of base within that zone. Now, each of these buildings will come with a specific quest line. At the end of that quest line, you will get one of these books. Again, this will become very apparent once you actually level up, but essentially, the binding assembly notes are traded in for free, small, or medium building blueprints. This vendor is an Ashran, and a quest will show you how to get there. Now, these are rewarded from the outpost quest lines in Gorgrond and the Spires of Iraq. Next, the comprehensive outpost construction guides are rewarded from the outpost quest lines in Talador and Nagrand, and can be used to purchase one free um, large bl uh, building blueprint each. So overall, this means that you can get two free large blueprints and two free small slash medium blueprints. Additional blueprints can be purchased via the vendor in your town hall, with small blueprints costing 750 gold, medium costing 1000 gold, and large costing 1500 gold. In addition to the cost from the actual blueprints, the buildings themselves do cost gold and garrison resources to construct and upgrade. You will not get a refund if you replace an already constructed building, so just, just you know, do bear that in mind. However, they all are quite affordable. I found that I had enough re garrison resources and gold from leveling to make this a complete non-issue. Okay, time for the third and perhaps most meaty part of this guide. So I'm going to talk about all the buildings. This is going to be pretty long. So, you may want to skip it if you already know what the buildings are. Now, before I talk about the specific buildings, it's worth explaining the work order system to you. This system is a very important part of many of the various garrison buildings. These will allow you to turn in one kind of resource and then get another. This will always be a favorable trade. Of course, that is assuming that you actually want the resource that you'll get at the end. You can stack up to seven work orders on a level one building, 14 on a level two building, and 21 on a level 3 building. These will each take 4 hours to complete, and you can complete one at a time. So if you have 10 work orders stacked up on uh, your barn, then it will take 40 hours to complete all of them. Again though, this will be taught to you in-game pretty early on, so I'm just really glancing over it now for the sake of everything making sense for the guide. Now then, let's talk about the large buildings. So I'll start off with the garrison, as this is the very first building that you will encounter. At level 1, this will unlock patrol missions, which are essentially just follower missions, which give a far higher experience reward. This is really useful initially, as you will want to get a well-leveled roster of followers as soon as possible. At level 2, you get the ability to recruit one of your followers as a bodyguard who will accompany you in the world. These guys are quite strong, and they are really useful when soloing things. Then, at level 3, your follower limit will be increased by 5, and you will be able to select between different racial guards and banners around your garrison. The main benefit here is the increased follower, well, active follower limit, and uh, that stuff about the racial guards is really just a nice cosmetic thing. Also, you can have more than, I think 25 is the maximum amount of active followers. However, you can only have a certain amount of them active and able to do missions at one point. This is done by Blizzard to encourage you to have a well-varied roster of followers that have got many different traits. Next up, we have the Bunker slash War Mill. This is a very powerful building. At level 1, it will double your chance to get a quest reward upgrade. Now, if you are not aware, your quest rewards in Draenor can actually, well, basically be Warforged. This will increase them from being green quality to either blue or epic. The Bunker will double your chance of this happening, so it is super handy while leveling. Also, Iron Horde mobs will be able to drop Iron Horde armor scraps if you have the Bunker slash War Mill, and then these can be turned into transmog sets that match the various Warlords of Draenor Orc clans, or things like the Stormwind slash Orgrimmar guard armor. At level 2, you will get access to the work orders for this building. These cost 20 garrison resources each, and will reward you with Iron Horde transmog scraps, and then also item level upgrade tokens for your followers, this will allow you to increase the gear level of your level 100 followers. Finally, at level 3, one of your three bonus rolls per week will be free. Essentially, you'll just get the token from this building once per week. You can unlock the level 3 blueprint of this building by getting 20 of your followers to level 100 and then, of course, paying 1,500 gold at the vendor. 
Next, we have these stables. Now, the stables are, of course, mount related. At level 1, you will get the ability to tame beasts and train them into a mount. There are a total of 6 available mounts, and you can check out my specific stable video from the beta for more information. At level 2, this building will give you the ability to interact with objects without having to dismount, and it will also mean that you will no longer be able to be dazed by mobs. Since Warlords of Draenor does not have flying, this is going to be an extremely useful perk. Well, that's a nice quality of life thing anyway. Then at level 3, your mount speed will be increased by 20% while on Draenor, and the level 3 blueprint is unlocked by taming all 6 mounts. Next, we've got the Mage Tower slash Spirit Lodge. This actually provides a very handy teleportation service. There are these things in the world called Ogre Waygates. They're scattered throughout Draenor, and I'll put up a map on the screen to show you where they are. These can be activated by getting 25 Ogre Waystones and then clicking on the Waygate. Now, these Waystones will drop from Ogre mobs in Draenor. Once you activate a Waygate, you'll be able to make a one-way portal from your garrison to the gate. To um, use these gates to get back to your garrison, though, will cost additional ones of those um, Ogre Waystones. Now, at level 1, you'll get one portal. At level 2, you'll get two portals. And at level 3, you will get three portals. You can unlock the level 3 blueprint by collecting 500 of these Waystones, which will require quite a lot of farming. This is a very useful building if you just want to hop around the place and not have to bother with flight paths. Next, we've got the Gnomish Gearworks slash Goblin Workshop. At level 1, this will give you access to a bunch of inventions per day. These are basically engineer toy items. Uh, I've got a video on them. I don't think they're particularly interesting. At level 2, you'll get access to 5 more inventions. And then finally, at level 3, you will get a tank, which you can drive once per day. You can upgrade this building by completing the Terrific Technology Achievement, which will involve using all of the ga um, gadgets from the first two levels multiple times. That is all of the large buildings covered. Let's move on to the medium ones. First, I'm going to talk about the barn. This will give you access to leatherworking slash skinning resources via a hunting system in Nagrand. This will involve you using a trap on low HP creatures within Nagrand. And once a creature is trapped, you will get an item called a caged beast. This item will depend on the creature that you have trapped though. So if you trap an Elec slash um, Cleftooth, you will get a caged leathery beast. And if you capture a Talbuk or Wolf, you'll get a caged furry beast. And these caged items can be handed in to the building's work order NPC in order to get leather and fur crafting mats. So at level 1, you can capture Talbuks, Wolves, Cleftoofs, and Elix, and can stack 7 work orders. At level 2, you'll get access to a new trap, which can trap River Beasts and Boar. These will give you caged meaty beasts, which can be turned into food, and at level 2, you can stack 14 work orders. Finally, at level 3, you will be able to trap elite creatures. These will give you Savage Blood, which is used to craft epic armor and weapons. An elite Cleftooth gives a blood plus tons of hide. A elite River Beast gives blood plus tons of food. And an elite Wolf will give you blood plus tons of fur. Also, at level 3, you can stack 21 work orders. So if you're a leather worker and a crafter and maybe someone who's making food for your guild, then this is super useful. The level 3 blueprint for this building is unlocked by completing the Master Trapper achievement, which will involve you doing 125 barn work orders. Next up, we have got the Gladiator's Sanctum. This is a PvP building. So at level 1, it will just give you the ability to collect broken bones from dead players. These broken bones are actually very useful with the work order for this building. This will allow you to turn in 50 bones for one bit of primal PvP gear. This is eye level 620, which is below heroic dungeons, however, when in PvP, it will scale up to item level 675, meaning that it is a very powerful bit of starter gear. Now, the other perk that you get at level 1 is that it will increase your out of combat health regeneration. At level 2, it will give you access to the Nemesis system. This will allow you to select a specific race of the other faction, and it gives you a quest which involves killing 500 of them. Once you do this, you will get a title which is specific to that race. Level 2 also gives you safe fall and unlimited underwater breathing while in the outdoor zones of Draenor. Finally, at level 3, you will get access to the Colosseum. This is a free-for-all, where everyone has only got one life, so it's pretty cool, and the winning player will get the Lord slash Lady of War title, a toy flag, and a shot at getting PvP gear at the end. To get the level 3 blueprint, you must collect 4,000 bones in total. This will unlock the Bone Collector achievement. 
Next, we've got the Inn slash Tavern. This is a dungeon and follower related building. At level one, it will give you access to a daily dungeon quest. There are two kinds of daily dungeon quest. One of them will give you toy box items and the other one will give you a bag at the end and that bag can contain item level 630 PVE gear, which is quite useful. This sort of harkens back to the daily dungeon quest system from Wrath of the Lich King. At level two, you will unlock an NPC who can recruit one follower per week. Basically, you will choose a specific trait and then three random followers with that trait will appear. You will then be able to select one of those followers. Then at level three, you will unlock a new kind of follower mission. These are called treasure missions and they will award from 50 to 150 gold and take between 30 minutes and six hours. To get the level three blueprint, you must do all of the dungeon quests, which will complete the stay a while and listen achievement. Next, we've got the lumber mill. This will allow you to harvest trees in order to get timber. This timber is then converted into garrison resources via the building's work order. Each work order costs 10 timber and will give you 20 garrison resources. At level one, you can harvest small trees, which give four to five timber. At level two, you can harvest medium trees, which give 11 to 15 timber. And finally, at level three, you can harvest large trees, which give 11 to 15 timber. The level three blueprint is unlocked by completing the upgrading the mill achievement, which involves doing 75 mill work orders. Now, as time goes on with this building, you will actually unlock a quest, which gives you a follower who, if placed inside the building, will increase the yield of its work orders by, I believe, 50%. Finally, we have the trading post. At level one, this will let you trade garrison resources for mats and then mats for resources. Each day, the work order for this building will change and it will ask for five of a certain crafting mat and in return will give you 30 garrison resources, which is quite a good trade. Then it will also have a vendor who will sell five of a common mat for 20 garrison resources. At level two, you will get access to the Shatari Defense faction if you are the Alliance and the Laughing Skull faction if you are the Horde. Once you wrap up with these by killing mobs in either Gorgrond or Shatrath City, you will get access to various rep items such as vanity items like a mount and a transmog set. Level two will also unlock access to an auctioneer NPC. I will do a full guide on these factions at a later date. Finally, at level three, you will get a 20% bonus to all of your Warlords of Draenor reputations account wide. You can unlock the level three blueprint by completing the Savage Friends achievement, which requires you to get exalted with three Draenor reps. Okay, so next I'm going to cover small buildings, but in the interests of the guide being a reasonable length, I'll just cover all the professional ones with a graphic. The small buildings are generally profession related with the exception of the storehouse and salvage yard. The work orders for the profession related buildings will involve turning in five of a common crafting material in turn for getting one of the cooldown crafting materials, which is of rare quality. So essentially, it's kind of like the daily cooldown stuff. You can also assign followers with matching traits to these buildings in order to increase the yield of each work order. Characters with both the profession and the building will be able to get access to Draenor crafting recipes and of course, just all the most powerful stuff. So you really do want to build the profession buildings that match your character's professions. Now, the more unique buildings are the salvage yard and storehouse. The salvage yard allows you to get salvage from garrison missions. Basically, there is a chance of getting a green quality box from a mission, which can be opened at the salvage yard. Salvage can contain some really useful items to increase the item level of your followers. The level three salvage yard increases the chance of getting salvage and will allow you to get transmog items, which resemble the login screen gear. The level one blueprint is from the Spires of Iraq mission called Flame On, and the level three is unlocked by completing an achievement, which involves opening 100 salvage boxes. The storehouse will give you access to your personal bank at level one and will increase the number of total active work orders for every building by five. Level two will also give you access to your guild bank. Finally, at level three, it will increase the total maximum work orders for every building by 15, which will allow you to stack up loads of work orders. Next, I'm going to cover the other buildings. These are present in every single garrison. So the mine will provide you with access to both kinds of drain or ore. As you upgrade the mine, it will become larger, containing more ore nodes. Whenever you mine a node of ore, you will get Drainix Stone. This can be turned into the mine's work order NPC. At level two, you can assign one of your followers with the mining trait to the mine, which will increase the yield of the work orders. To unlock the mine, simply do the quest at the NPC outside the mine, and to unlock the level three mine, you just need to complete the achievement, which involves looting 500 Drainix Stone. 
Next, we've got the Herb Garden. This is functionally the same as the mine, just as you will get herbs instead. It's unlocked by doing the Clearing the Garden quest at level 96. This is just given by the NPC inside the garden. At level 2, you can add a follower to boost the yield of its work orders, which require Drainix Seeds, which is the equivalent of Drainix Stone for miners. Then at level 3, you can grow a fruit tree, which will give you access to food buffs. Next, we've got the Pet Menagerie. This is just the pet battle related building. At level 1, it will basically attract pets to it, and then there's a daily quest which involves fighting those pets, which gives you pet battle currency. At level 2, it will increase your chance to trap pets in Draenor, and also the cooldown of your pet battle and um, revive thingy will decrease. At level 3, you will also unlock a new daily quest, which gives you access to a big bag of pet supplies at the end, which can give you many rewards, including a new pet. The level 1 pet menagerie is unlocked by just completing the Pets vs Pets achievement at level 98, which is available at the building, and then the level 3 blueprint is unlocked by completing the Draenic Pet Battler achievement, which involves winning 500 pet battles on Draenor. Finally, we have the Fish Shack, which allows you to collect Warlords of Draenor fish inside the fishing pool in your garrison. At level 1, this will give you access to a daily fishing quest and small Draenor fish. At level 2, it will give you access to medium Draenor fish, and finally, at level 3, it will give you access to enormous drain ore fish and a few unique fish called lurkers, which give unique rewards. At level 3, you can also recruit Nat Pagel by going back to the anglers and doing a few quests. After this is done, you can earn Nat's lucky coins by fishing lurkers, and um, these are just useful for various fishing things. So that is all of the garrison buildings covered. Let's move on to some recommended builds. Now that I've covered all of the buildings and the leveling process, it's time to recommend some builds to you. Now, there's a lot of freedom with the garrison, and these builds are tailored to a specific playstyle. Of course, feel free to do whatever the hell you want, this is just a bit of a recommendation. So first of all, for those of you who are interested in raiding, I recommend that you go with a barracks and then a dwarven bunker slash war mill in your large slots. The barracks will let you train up followers faster via the high XP patrol missions, and it will also let you do more missions per day because you will have more active followers. This is very useful, and of course, the more that you level up your followers, then the quicker you're going to access those high-level missions that reward the good gear. Then, of course, um, for the bunker, that's recommended because its work order will give you stuff that upgrades your followers' item level once they reach level 100. This is very good, and of course, those garrison missions that reward raid gear are only available to people who have well-geared followers, who are, I think it's above item level 630, so you totally do want that. Now, some of the missions for followers also give Apexus crystals and bonus roll tokens, which again is very useful stuff. Alright, so for the medium slots, well, these are going to vary quite a bit depending on what you're doing. The Lunar Fall Inn, slash whatever the Horde equivalent is, will let you recruit a follower with a specific trait every week. This could be very useful when trying to round out your roster of followers. Also, the Barn will give you access to leatherworking mats, and then at level 3, it will give you Savage Blood, which is used to craft epic gear. This could be very good, especially if you are a crafter. Also, if you are responsible for your raid's food buffs, then the meat from the Barn will help a lot. Then the lumber mill is great for getting garrison resources, and the trading post is great for trading in those garrison resources for various kinds of mats, which could be useful if you're a raider who's maybe crafting potions and doing things like that. Personally though, I will be going with the barn, as I am going to be crafting with leatherworking, and the inn, as it's going to synergize quite well with the two large buildings. You'll have the inn getting you loads of followers, and then the barrack slash dwarven uh, bunker leveling them up and gearing them up, which is pretty good. And then of course, lots of crafted gear from leatherworking. Then of course, as far as the small buildings go, I recommend that you match both of your characters' professions, especially if they can craft gear and items that are related to raiding, and then also getting a salvage yard for your final slot so that it can help you upgrade your followers' gear. Okay, so now that that's covered, I'm going to talk about leveling recommendations. Bear in mind that this is based on a level 2 garrison. Now, here's the thing with leveling, though. It's not really too much of an arduous task in Warlords. It's quite quick. So, bear that in mind in that this is perhaps not very useful, but still. And what I recommend doing is just keeping the barracks that you get for free in your large slot. You'll need it le at level 100, most likely anyway. So, do that and just level up your followers. Then, in the medium slot, I would put a lumber mill. This will allow you to get loads of garrison resources, which will be useful at level 100. Finally, for the small buildings, I recommend getting a salvage yard and a matching profession building. The salvage yard will help you gear up your followers, and the matching profession building 
will allow you to do um, your crafting material work orders as quickly as possible, which will give you a bit of a leg up once you reach max level. Okay, so next, for the PvPers, really, there's only one thing you need to worry about, and that's the Gladiator Sanctum. Just get one of these and then get into the fight. The gear that it provides will boost up to eye level 675 when you're in PvP combat, so there's just no need to worry about the other kinds of gear that the garrison can provide. Basically, get a Gladiator Sanctum, and then get whatever other buildings that you find to be fun. That's, that's my recommendation there. Okay, so next we've got gold making. Now, this um, is going to really depend specifically on how you want to make gold, but here are my general recommendations. So for the large buildings, as always, you want the barracks. This means you can get more active followers, so you can do more missions at the same time, which is quite useful. And um, that's good. Now, throughput-wise, the other large buildings don't really matter. The stable, gearworks, bunker slash war mill, and mage tower slash spirit lodge don't really have a direct effect, so you can choose whatever you want. However, do bear in mind that the mage tower slash spirit lodge may edge out the others as it will allow you to port quickly to any of the farming locations that you might be using. Now, there is quite a lot of choice with the medium buildings. The Lunar Fall Inn will, at level 3, give you access to treasure missions. So, if you want to be focusing on making gold via hardly any effort by doing the garrison missions, then this really is a great way to do it. The other medium buildings for gold making are the Lumber Mill and Trading Post. The mill will allow you to earn garrison resources, which you then can trade in for materials at the Trade Post. This could be very useful for those of you who are using professions. Also, having an auction house at the trading post is just so convenient. So yeah, really these buildings just synergize very well. So it's really a choice between wanting the lumber mill slash trading post or the, um, the Lunar Fall Inn if you're really going to be focusing on doing the missions. Now, another building that could be useful, I suppose, is the barn because if you plan on crafting epic gear or just any of that stuff, then of course the barn's going to be useful because it will of course give you those savage bloods. So that certainly could be quite useful. And again, you can always sell the leather working mats on the auction houses you get from the barn. However, you're probably not going to be as efficient as someone who's just going out and skinning. So I don't know if it's a very competitive way to make gold. So yeah, really it's either Lunar Fall Inn and something else or Lumber Mill and Trading Post. Then for the small buildings, I recommend going with two matching profession buildings. Um, if you only plan on playing twice a week, then the storehouse is great for your third slot, as it will allow you to queue up more work orders, which is very nice. So if you can maybe play for, say, five hours a day, or I don't know, five hours twice a week, then that means you'll be able to queue up enough work orders to make it so that you only have to log in twice a week, which could be pretty handy. Now, if you plan on making money via garrison missions, then of course the salvage yard will be a great choice. And really, other than that, your third profession, or your third um, small building slot, can just be any profession building that you really want. A lot of this is based on the economy of your server, though, and I will do a full guide on garrison gold making once I have my own, like, full setups working on my alts, and um, when there's a proper economy. Because, of course, it's hard to test this on the beta when there's no real economy going on. Finally, I recommend that you use the mine and herb garden on every character possible. If you do this, then you will be literally swimming in both ore and herbs, which will be very useful. I don't know what the value of these will be like in the auction house, though. However, I can imagine that it won't be worth a lot because so many people will have access to these materials. Still, doing this in as many characters as possible will give you a lot of supply. Okay, so that is it for my guide to the garrisons. And really, I think that's just about everything covered in enough detail for you to be able to make your own decisions. And hopefully some of those build recommendations are going to be useful to you. Now, there's probably one or two more garrison buildings in the pipeline for the channel. I'm pretty sure I'll do one in gold making once I get some more real-world testing done. But other than that, that should really be it for the feature. I'll see how it goes with perhaps doing some videos on the harder garrison achievements or really anything like that that crops up. But for now, that is it for the video. There are, of course, many other Warlords of Draenor guides on the channel that you can check out. Um, so yeah, be sure to have a look at that. And I will, of course, be doing loads of Warlords of Draenor coverage, as well as stuff for any subsequent patches and, you know, daily news, lore, etc. All that good stuff. That's it for the video, though. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.